नमस्कार आदाब सस्यकाल कसकाय केडोहालाय केम छो वेलकम टू स्पॉटलाइट विद आभा एंड आई एम योर होस्ट आभा जादव टुडे वी हैव अ पावरफुल वुमन हु इज अ सीनियर मीडिएटर एंड लीड साइकोलॉजिस्ट एट टैग द एडीआर ग्रुप साइकोलॉजिस्ट लीडरशिप फैसिलिटेटर एंड फाउंडर सखीरी शी इज रिसर्च स्कॉलर आईआईटी दिल्ली फ्रेंड्स Please help me welcome Miss Anviksha Tripathi Jain from Delhi, India. Welcome An- uh, Anviksha into the spotlight. Thank you, thank you so much, Abha ji, and uh, thank you for such a kind introduction. I'm so delighted to be here uh, on the spotlight with you. Wait, detailed introduction is still left. So, friends, before we deep dive into question answer round with Anviksha, let me give. brief introduction of ms anviksha tripathi jain anviksha is a senior mediator and lead psychologist at tag as i told you just now the area group she is also the founder for sakiri ngo the voice for women she actively engages with her clients wherein she undertakes counseling or training session and active mediations to increase the productivity and happiness quotient in personal and professional lives in her previous stints she worked with various leading mnc's such as british airways air canada indus group and nwnt daba she has authored and co-authored many articles on emotional well-being and dispute resolution she has been bestowed with the women leadership award as the leading mental health and social consultant in delhi ncr and also best social and mental health activist for the past 2 years that is 1920 and 2021 she has also been a panelist and lead speaker on mental health for a number of esteemed organizations including cii iwn nhrd world auto forum wicci wiki and iibp to name a few Anviksha is currently enrolled as a PhD scholar at IIT Delhi wherein her research will be on the mediation psychology and the dharmashastra she has pursued a certification as women leadership coach from Oxford University and also hold double masters degree in MBA OB and HR MA psychology along with being a certified art therapist a certified posh trainer and a resource with the ministry of women and child development this is really so empowering anviksha i'm actually thrilled with the you know with knowing all these of your achievements ma'am uh, to begin with all i can say abha ji is that uh, they did i didn't begin to see them as uh, to begin with they were not meant to be achievements they were just meant to be uh, you know stepping stones uh, one after the other uh, and i just had the you know quest or the thirst to keep on doing something or apni knowledge ko badhane ke liye aur apne aap ko as a better individual as a better professional badhate rehne ke liye jo bhi uh, milestones aisa laga ki ab iske baad ye achieve karna hai ya iske baad ye padhna hai uh, bas wo karte chale gaye uh, आज कभी कभी ऐसा लगता है कि ठीक है शायद कुछ किया लेकिन अभी भी बहुत कुछ करना बाकी है वाओ सो टू बिगिन विद व्हाट मोटिवेटेड यू टू ऑप्ट फॉर साइकोलॉजी एंड हाउ डिड यू शेप योर करियर सो आभा जी जैसा कि आपने देखा मेरा जो स्टिंट था माय स्टिंट वाज मोस्टली यू नो आई वाज इनटू द कॉर्पोरेट वर्ल्ड टू बिगिन विद यू नो Uh, I had started working in the corporate uh, genre uh, in the corporate world about 15 16 years back so my beginning of my career was with the corporate field and that is why I had an MBA to begin with uh, but what I realized even in the corporate world and you know I was specializing in HR and organizational behavior 
uh, which is which has some elements of psychology in it ob is uh, you know a lot of industrial psychology as well so what i realized was that corporates or uh, you know organizations are as good as their people right and people are as good as their mental health and as good as their psychology you know or as the psyche allows them to be uh that is what kind of uh, interested me to understand more about psychology uh that is when i pursued started pursuing uh you know my degrees and my uh, counseling etc in psychology and that has also been 10 plus years now um uh, and that is how i shaped my career so my forte uh, and my uh Uh, you know my specialization in psychology is industrial because i have been with the corporates as well as uh, you know personal clients uh, counseling and trainings so that is how uh, you know i took the help of i amalgamated the two loves that i had uh, which are uh, which were obhr my psychology my mba training and my uh, psychology training and i got them together to you know uh, move forward wow this is really interesting you know when you take your passion ahead your love and right. the field you are passionate about definitely it gives you immense success and then uh, you actually work for it from heart yes yeah and you know what we realized abha ji was that you know you can have as many operational systems that you want you can have them in place you can have the financial place the systems in place you can have the sales processes in place but who are the people who are delivering it right they are people like you and me So now, if I have a trouble at home, if I have some mental health issue, or if I have a psych, you know, my psyche is not allowing me, or if I'm not my optimal best at my organization, I'm not able to give the best, even with the best, uh, you know, external processes being present. So if, as an individual, I'm not able to use those processes, and if I'm not able to give my hundred percent, then the organizational efficiency and productivity also decreases. So, like I said, so, an organization is as good as its people. and people need to have to be at their optimal best to lead a happy and a satisfactory life i would say very well said so you are currently working as a senior mediator and lead psychologist at tag so can you please right. throw some light on the role you are performing right now so uh tag is uh, actually one of its uh, you know i would say one of the few organizations or uh, you know uh, firms that are uh, you know now operating in the mediation space in india uh, tag uh, the adr group is uh, it stands for alternate dispute resolution now uh, we all know that the indian courts are highly burdened uh, and there is a whole lot of pressure on them you know there are more cases than there are you know uh, judges or lawyers or even high or courts or high courts all put together in india so it's a lot of pressure on the judiciary and that is why uh, you know going forward alternate dispute resolutions are going to be the way and it has come up uh, you know it started to come up in a big way in india also now people are realizing that and uh, one part of it is of course mediation now a mediation is when we try to amicably settle disputes which are either personal or professional in nature uh, for the clients in which it's a win win situation for both the parties now if you go the legal route uh, of course there is a loss of time uh, emotion energy uh, money and there is a lot of investment from the client side on the case itself so you know one case uh you know even a simple divorce matter can go on for like 10 12 years now uh, in indian courts how it usually happens now you know that's a huge lot of amount in a person's you know life so that is why you know we take on mediations at tag for our clients wherein we try and settle their disputes out of court and in a manner which is acceptable to both the parties and which is acceptable uh you know even under the court of law so it's not something that you know uh, we do randomly ki acha theek hai aap bhi baith jaiye fir you know it's not like that it is within the purview and also uh we said dispute we do dispute settlement and after that uh you know it's a kind of uh, you know help that we are providing we are extending to the judiciary as well because uh, you know we are unburdening it uh with you know probably matters which are of much higher 
uh, pressing importance at that point in time so we are also you know kind of uh, you know taking it uh, uh, like a help for the judiciary and of course the matters are you know uh, settled in lesser time probably lesser amount and you know lesser investment for both the parties and of course it becomes like a win win for both all the parties involved this is a really a tough job you are doing anviksha i must say that so uh, i think this is uh, what the purpose is behind your uh, sakiri ngo also as you are the founder of sakiri ngo so i hope it is related to that please elaborate about your ngo yes, yes. Uh, so i will just you know continue from the last uh, question so my role at tag is uh, mostly in uh, you know i step in as a mediator uh, you know so my partner uh, at uh, tag uh she is a she is a lawyer and i bring in so she brings in the legal aspect wherein i bring in the emotional aspect and of course uh you know we together try and do our dispute resolutions together so that is my uh, you know job at uh, of course at tag and uh, you know so we decided that you know uh, while we were you know dealing with all these issues we also realized that a lot of women need help otherwise also not just in field of uh you know legal aspects but a lot of women just don't have information at their disposal right uh they have probably an issue unko yahi nahi pata ki acha agar legal jana hai to kahan jaye kisse baat kare naukri dhoondni hai to theek hai padh liya 10th kar li 12th kar li ba kar liya graduation kar li but you don't really know how to go out and how to look for a job who should you be approaching or if you have a medical issue who should you be approaching to be you know just to be able to talk to that person or uh, like i am a mental health uh, you know uh, professional so in my case i deal personally with a lot of people who just have so many issues at home and they just don't have an outlet who do they speak to mental health ke liye bhi baat karni hai to kahan jaye who are and who are the people who are bona fide to be able to help you it should not be like you know everybody a lot of people don't want to even share their issues because they feel that Uh, you know they will be taken advantage of so they need to have a safe space they also need to have people whom they can trust and with that kind of uh, you know in understanding we started this ngo called sakiri which is uh, the empowering uh, you know zone for women wherein we extend help to women and children uh, across all strata so that is also a, you know i would say differentiating factor for us we are not just focusing on women from a certain uh, i would say walk of life but anybody who needs help because even if you do come from a so called privileged background a lot of women might not even have access to legal aid right they don't even know who do they need to go to so we connect them with experts uh, in the field that they require help with and of course we take on their and help them in any manner that they can uh in which we can and of course we take it on from there this is really really uh, a very important uh, work you are doing under your ngo and uh, i truly agree with you that in indian society many a times females they are suffering from a lot of vi- uh, domestic violence and many other issues domestic violence is just one example if i say one example there are many more uh, uh, such issues are there where women Uh, they need to speak up they need to raise voice but just because log kya kahenge hamare samaj mein aurton ko is tarah se bolna nahi chahiye you know wo ek sharm ya logon se wo jo rejection hai uske dar se females are not opening up their mouth so i think your sakiri ngo is a big 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 help to such females who can directly come to you and open up their heart and uh, of course they can get the required help so but uh, at cool. the same times i want to ask one thing that despite of so many revolutionary actions taken by powerful women like you and many more a lot of reform works are been done and social works are been done for the upliftment of women so what is the root cause according to you beho- behind the poor upliftment of the women in the society aba ji mujhe lagta hai ki poor upliftment of women in the society is not just unique uh, to asia or india i would say uh, i think it is a phenomena which is present globally 
इट्स जस्ट दैट हम इतना शायद उस चीज को एक्नोलेज नहीं करते हैं हम अपने आस पास देखते हैं तो हमें लगता है इंडिया में ज्यादा हो रहा है बट आई फील वुमेन इन जनरल यू नो डोंट देर इज अ पोअर अपलिफ्टमेंट ऑल्सो बिकॉज नॉट जस्ट ऑफ द एक्सटर्नल फैक्टर्स बट इट इज आई थिंक अ लॉट टू डू विद द इंटरनल फैक्टर्स बिकॉज लाइक यू राइटली पॉइंटेड आउट वो बेड़िया वो जो एक uh, सोच है वो हमने खुद ने बना रखी है लोग क्या कहेंगे हम किसी के पास जाएंगे तो समाज क्या बोलेगा मैं अगर घर से बाहर चली गई घर में इतना पैसा है सब कुछ है बट अगर मैं बाहर काम करने चली गई तो लोग क्या कहेंगे कि तुम्हारे हस्बैंड तुमको खाना नहीं देते सो यू नो एक जो एक वो जो दायरा है वो जो परसेप्शन है वो शायद हम लेडीज ने ही अपने लिए बना रखा है एंड वी एज वुमेन ऑल्सो प्रोपोगेट टू द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन राइट सो आई थिंक Uh, you know uh, just as much as it is in the hands of men to change the society it is also a charge that we need to take as women hame apne haq ke liye khud hi ladna padega koi aur aake hamare liye nahi ladega and that is a fact that we need to learn x y z aapke liye kyun aake karega agar and it is a fact of life wo kaha jata hai na ki bachcha bhi jab rota hai tabhi maa doodh pilati hai so unless we take charge of our own situation we need to first break those shackles in our own head hame apne aap ko us daire se bahar nikalna padega apne aas pass apni saheliyon ko apni mothers ko apni behno ko hame wo himmat deni padegi that is fine it's okay to talk about it hum kai bar as mothers apne betiyon ko hi sikhate hain ki koi baat nahi beta ladkiyon ko thoda sunna padta hai sambhal ke chalo sunna padta hai but aisa nahi hai ki aap wo keval ladki ko sikhaye I am raising two genders. I have been blessed with a son and a daughter both. And I can't imagine my household without either of them. So uh, you know but agar main apni beti ko ye sikha rahi hu ki beta bado ki baat suno to mujhe apne bete ko bhi yahi sikhana hai. Absolutely. So it cannot be a one way process. I need to tell him also to agar main apni bitiya ko keh rahi hu ki beta utha ke plate kitchen mein rakh ke aao to mere bete ko bhi main yahi bol rahi hu ki apni thali yahan mat chhodo. Ise uthao and put it in in the sink for washing so what i also want to uh, you know just kind of say here ki hame i cannot strongly say ki aapko bilkul hi apne aap ko prove karne ke liye completely feminist direction mein jana hai ya completely you know anti feminist direction mein jana hai if as people we are just humanist i think that should be enough for the society to understand ki samne wale ki problem kya hai so and that will automatically bring an upliftment for women also because the moment we start seeing the other person not as a daughter as a wife as a you know girl you start seeing the other person as a human in problem or what the issue is no matter whether you're a girl you're a boy whoever you are you will and humanism for everyone and yes. i think that should be the thing and women have to take charge themselves hame khud ko hi apne aap ko uthana padega nobody else is going to do it for us unfortunately absolutely absolutely i truly agree with you and at the same time i just want to add one more point that yes as a mother definitely we are supposed to teach our girl and boy the same thing same values and the same respect for uh, you know both the genders but at the same time what i feel is mother in laws must also change their uh, you know thought process or attitude or a uh, kind of uh, behavior towards their daughter in laws absolutely absolutely abha ji and i think wo bhi bada organic process hota hai like for example i am a mother today agar aaj main apne bachchon ko uh, equality ya ek is tarike ki cheez sikhaungi to kal ko jab when i become a mother in law it will be an ingrained nature for me so it has to start early i can't expect uh, that you know uh, you know not to be a great mother you know not to be a mother and then suddenly become a mother in law so i think it will it has to be an organic process or we have to start small and what you said is absolutely right mothers in law ko bhi apni daughters in law ko uh, you have to see her as like i said you have to see everybody as a human dusre ghar se koi insaan aaya hai uske alag upbringing hai uske alag vichar hai the moment you accept that she is not a clone of you Yes. Your own two children are not a clone of you. So the moment we try and understand that, I think everything becomes seamless, and it's true for daughters-in-law also. You have to understand that your mother-in-law is a different person. 
she is not a clone of your mother so you have to also give that respect it's it's a mutual uh, you know give and take absolutely so now you are working for mental health of the people also so how much uh, mental health of people have got affected uh, after covid 2020 I uh thank you for that question Abhay ji I think it's a very relevant question um and uh, it has been impacted a lot I would say personally because uh the time is such uh number one the pandemic was kind of you know thrust upon us without any sort of preparation one day we were all going to office the next day we were told that from tomorrow on you can't even move out right so the first lockdown i felt uh, you know people were still kind of struggling to understand what it is it the reality of it had not really hit us so hard right and the first lockdown if you remember even uh, from social media it was all about fun and you know people saying oh you know we we are cooking this and we are cooking that and you know so it was more like a holiday but once but you know once that kind of that novelty uh kind of faded away is when people started to really understand the situation and the gravity of the situation uh and it has i would say the, the mental health of people has kind of been impacted a lot in the past two years because you're in constrained spaces you're in constrained environments you have no outlet uh you know pehle agar aapko you know ghar mein aapka kuch kisi se let's say jhagda ho gaya aap office chale gaye you were you know in your own work you came came back and you know everything else was fine now just the fact that you cannot even step out there is no vent there is no uh you know outside interaction is you know kind of pulling people down and apart from that there have been financial losses uh there have been economic losses that people are dealing with there have been health losses that people are dealing with a lot of families have lost their loved ones so in i think in the second wave there was not even a single family i would say who did not know of a loved one that had passed away unfortunately it was such a sad situation so you know uh, when you are in that kind of a, a sudden you know in a, such a sad situation it's of course very natural and uh, it has impacted a lot and i do hope that you know it becomes an endemic soon and even if we have to learn to live with the new normals at least uh, you know we have uh, some sort of kind of venting out and some sort of you know places where we can kind of give our feelings a vent uh, so that it's slightly better but yes it has been very badly impacted i would feel i truly agree uh most of them they have uh, affected so much that it will take i think years to fill that gap again i feel um, avaji it has still not been completely even studied we say that stress anxiety yes but you know the long term effects of it i think we will only see it in another 2 to 5 to 10 years because even the you know uh, something as simple as children who were born in this you know in this age even the kids who could not go to school now we are saying that their learning is being impacted you being in the education sector yourself would know but how badly it has been impacted we will only be able to know in the long term so Absolutely. i think this is this is something that you know we will feel the effects of for a long time to come absolutely uh, so you are a woman leadership coach too so what kind of training programs or uh, areas you are covering under your training programs uh so my programs uh, abha ji i personally cover a lot of uh, you know work life balance for women because i feel that is also uh, you know an area which is still uh, primarily considered to be a woman's domain uh, not many men uh, or not many male leaders are asked how do you balance work and home but you know I, that's a very uh, frequent question for to for women leaders so that is one area that i deal with a lot uh, secondly what i deal with is a lot of behavioral uh, coaching uh, which is a very interesting concept because as women we start believing that we are leaders uh, it's a study and it was done by oxford that women started believing or seeing themselves as leaders much later in life as compared to men right so men even from when they are in their early 20s or even younger started to see themselves as alpha males or you know leaders in their own, or their own pack between friends or whatever or in their work spaces so by the time they kind of really reached a leadership role in a corporate 
they had that behavior ingrained in them and that kind of you know that is how they were able to lead a team very well from day one uh, whereas women kind of only believe they were leaders till when they got that role so in a sense what we were trying to say is that you know men have prepared kind of prepared for it for a very long time subconsciously also so uh, how to kind of have that behavioral mindset and how to have that leadership mindset for women is all is what i deal with quite often um that you have to believe yourself to be a leader to become one yes right so how to you know instill that in young girls how to uh, you know get them to learn and believe that no even if you're 18 today you will be you know a ceo at 38 or 48 or whatever so don't uh, you know think that you're any less or whatever so those are the kind of topics that i deal with and of course uh, you know uh, how to deal with the team and you know all of those things and the basic for leaders the style of leadership etc uh, that way that i hold for all uh, leaders in general so any upcoming training programs uh we are uh, you know in the process of launching a lot of programs now also uh, because you know now i'm also researching on the dharmshastra so uh, you know our next training program will be on uh, you know how uh, what are the kind of leadership practices that ancient india developed or had and what are its modern applicability or you know how is it applicable to the corporates now so that is what we are uh, you know working on next so hopefully that will be some uh, you know ancient wisdom mixed with modern aptitude fantastic this is absolutely absolutely fantastic uh, anviksha i would love to talk to you more and more and get enlightened with your valuable insight but uh, every show has a time constraint so course, we have reached to the end of the show so thank you for sharing uh, your inspiring insights with us with us today i hope today after listening to you many females many women they they will be you know putting one minute for thought to empower themselves to open up their uh, you know voice to the problems they are facing to the issues they are going through so i thank you so much for providing me this platform abha ji and uh, i do hope that i was able to add some value to your uh, you know esteem program and uh, thank you for having me and uh, of course it was lovely connecting with you and we shall of course be connected we'll stay sure. connected and uh, keep this forward absolutely power. absolutely thank so, you so so friends please do give your suggestion in the comment box below the video and yes please do subscribe to my youtube channel and do hit the bell icon right here near subscriber button and also if you wish to connect with anviksha you are free to connect with me i'll get it connected with you uh, connected anviksha with you so this is abha jadav signing off with anviksha now with the promise to see you soon with an inspiring personality into the next episode till then do take very good care of yourself and your family members and keep watching spotlight with abha Bye bye. bye. Namaskar, Namaskar and Jai Hind. Jai Hind.